And we're back with another episode of My Grandfather's Road. Today, we have yet another presidential candidate, Mr. Tan Kin Lian. Hi, everybody. Hi. And of course, I'm joined with my dad, also Mr. Tan, Mr. Edmund Tan. Edmund is the I am also joined by three special guests. Of course, we have my wife, Mrs. Tan. <laughs> And then we have we have we have two friends, ah, uh, two, two friends. Huh? Two friends. Like that, uh, two oh, friends. Okay, okay, introduce yourself. Uh, huh? You don't introduce us. <laughs> you can introduce Hi, yourself. Hi, my name what? is Yuki Chan. I'm 26 years old this year. Mm -hmm. My name is Tommy. I'm 37 years old this year. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so, let's begin off with Mr. Tan Kin Lian. Why run for president at the age of 75? Uh, I think it is fate. Uh, because uh, I was supposed to be disqualified by now. The reason is this. In 2011, uh, the, the Constitution says uh, if you are a private sector candidate, you can count 15 years. Uh, during the past 15 years, uh, if you have run a company, you qualify. Yeah? The company must meet certain capital requirement. So in 2011, I... Uh, it was four years for me, uh, so I would have qualified. But now it's 12 years later. I would have missed the 15 years. I would have missed the 15 years. Uh, so I, I was actually all, all along saying, uh, uh, it's not for me, I, I already uh, passed the 15 years. And for some strange reason, which I don't understand, the government along the way increased to 20 years. Uh, the, uh, the qualifying period means if you have served in the, in a, as a chief executive of a large company the last 20 years and because they changed from 15 to 20 years I qualify again okay. uh, so uh, uh, I was supposed to be disqualified and then I qualified uh, then uh, I also would have preferred uh, other people to come forward uh, including Mr. Josh Go. Uh, which I, I, I respect him for his enthusiasm uh, and his other qualities. So I was hoping that Josh Go would be approved. Uh, but then uh, it was fated that he is disqualified and I become the candidate. Uh, for people who want uh, a president that is independent of the ruling government. Uh, so there is a, a large number of people who says, we don't want another PAP president. Uh, we want a president that is outside of the PAP. So that becomes me. But are you sure that most Singaporeans truly have that mindset that they want an independent president? Uh, yes. I will say uh, uh, my guess is easily more than 50%. Based on? Uh, okay, based on opinions of many people, uh, based upon the, uh, when you go out and meet people, they give you that view. Uh, and of, of course, based upon veterans in the political field uh, who have got a much better feel of the ground. I never believe in uh, politics. Uh, politics means you've got party A and party B. And they spend most of the time quarreling. They don't have the time to solve the problems of the country. And this is the problem you see in many countries. This, this is also the problem you see in Singapore. You look at parliament, uh, most of the time you are trying to show that one party is better than the other. Uh, I, 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 I think that is not useful. But is there not a need to debate about issues? Uh, yes, uh, the debate should be more uh, on the issue itself. Not, not because when you take when you like blue and I like red, we quarrel about that. But whether blue or red is a better color, you know. So therefore, uh, with politics, uh, uh, when it becomes uh, uh, because this side choose one color, you want to have another color, or this side choose one policy, you want to have a different policy. Uh, this is based upon arguing over personality, who says what, rather than arguing over. What the issue is about? Okay, then, but but by this, by this idea, does that mean that you think that we should just have a super majority and not have any discourse so that we can focus on the issues? Uh, okay, now the, 
uh, a super majority uh, it, it is one the uh, one possible uh, one possible the solution uh, uh, approach uh. Okay. Uh, if you look into Chinese history uh, the emperor uh, will appoint the most capable people uh, to be the ministers and they will spend their time uh, uh, use a use a talent uh, to uh, uh, use their talent to uh, 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 to find the solutions for the country. Okay, now that's actually a, a good model. Uh, that's a good model. So this thinking that uh, you must have political competition, a uh, contest by the parties. You just look around the world. Uh, most countries actually end up the the, poli the the political parties fighting among themselves. But okay, I want to come back here. Mm -hmm. uh, my view is uh, if you want to solve the problems of the country and in Singapore we have many problems not yet solved uh, one of them is the, our low birth rate what is the cause of the low birth rate yeah? uh, and uh, yeah. now we've got another problem the cost of living is too high it's increasing yeah. there's mm -hmm. another problem and I don't think politicking will solve the problem so what will solve the low birth rate uh, uh, yes, uh, this is this is something that uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the leaders, uh, whoever is appointed as a leaders, uh, should look into this and say what will solve the problem. You and should address this question to Debbie too. Yeah, I, I'm a part of the. She's low part birth of the problem. I'm <laughs> part of the problem, right? I guess. Why? Why? Why, why would you be part of the problem? Low birth rate. Yes, we have to encourage our Singapore citizens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be yes. doing more baby making. Engage in more sexual activity with <laughs> consent. <laughs> with consent. And and like, you know, I, I, I seen like comments, right? Saying like, you know, they are saying about you looking at pretty girls. But I, I, I would like to, you know, stand with you on that. Because I myself, I look at pretty girls. Wonderful. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. And right. Exactly. There who is nothing. Who doesn't who right. look at pretty girls? Even your father says so. It's like, <laughs> it's normal to look at pretty girls. Correct. We yeah. appreciate. But everything comes with consent. Yes. Am I right? Yep. Okay. And uh, <laughs> consent. All, all and consequences the in your case. What consequences? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> everything with consent. Why is it moving so fast uh, to pretty girls, right? The no, we want to. The thing is, we want to adjust. Yeah, the we and, and and talk through it. And yeah, to me, yeah, we're on the low birth rate issue. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and but, uh, but if guys cannot look at pretty girls and approach, then cannot get married, then how to have babies? Exactly. You guys let uh, your imagination run well. Wow, uh, huh? Okay, let me bring back to uh, <laughs> the low birth rate. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I want to quote my own family example. When I married my wife, uh, she was a sales girl in a bridal shop. Mm. Okay. Uh, then I, I met her and then later on caught her and married her. Mm -hmm. uh, she became a homemaker and she raised three children, uh, take care of them and now my children have their children. So she helped to take care of five grandchildren, uh, five grandkids. Uh, so I think there's one solution is this. We must recognize that in the country, some of the girls, female, would like to have jobs, working career. But some would say, I'm happy to be a homemaker. Mm. But in Singapore, our policies have been uh, rather uh, not balanced. But do you think that's because of a policy thing or it's just because of how society has changed and uh, no, women it, are getting more educated? Uh, okay. Now, women are getting more educated. That would re represent maybe half. Uh, right, because because like, they they are graduates, they want to yeah. go and they uh, but they are value their career, right? But there's there's the other half, like my wife. Okay, uh, she'll be quite happy to be a homemaker, and that's great. No, that's not great. You know huh. why? I can afford to have a wife as a homemaker. Most people can't. Okay, because it's you need two income to to pay mm. for a HDB flat, mm. so most people can't. Mm. The, so the solution is actually. Recognize that, uh, recognize that uh, you must make it possible for young families when they have children and when they are only uh, one, uh, one homemaker and one earning. In, in some countries, they give a generous uh, allowance to the mother. Mm. Uh, so that the cost of uh, uh, the cost uh, uh, 
uh, of raising children that doesn't become a burden. Mm, so I, their example, mm, their countries with that example. I think I, I I read across some articles also talking about homemaker is actually a job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we should recognize it as a job so that more people will be more comfortable. Yeah, we should get paid to stay. Oh yes, uh, yeah, that, yeah. that's something I I advocate. Yeah. But what if it comes to the point where everyone just decides to be homemakers. Uh, no, uh, Don't you think a no, policy no, no, like no. that would encourage uh, people to not want to work? Uh, no, uh, it, it will not be because there's still a, a, a good segment of females who love the challenge of their career. Okay. Uh, so therefore, uh, we, we shouldn't be thinking only of one side. We know that actually there's a diversity. I see. Uh, so I know of many women uh, who would be quite happy to be homemakers? Of course. Now they are working in the uh, in the service sector, working in the factory. Uh, if you make it possible for them to be homemakers, and uh, that segment of that group of people might opt, opt to be a homemaker, but the economics right now uh, is against that. Surely, yeah. surely. So, mm. let's say if you become president, may I implore you to consider my proposal? Yep. As what? If someone like you who could afford to have your wife be a homemaker is allowed to have more than one wife. <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 I don't think that is necessary. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that's necessary. Because uh, we must look at the problem and see what it really is the problem. Eh? Uh, the, the, the problem is not that uh, women are unmarried because there's not enough men. That's not a problem. Uh, okay? The problem is actually mostly uh, economics. Uh, yeah, means it is uh, difficult for a family uh, to have a homemaker and raise children. The economics don't work. Uh, so it's, it's not a matter of like you, you suggested. Nah? Mm. Not enough men, so we allow a man to have two, two wives. <laughs> Okay, Three? or the second wife has to be non-Singaporean, so we can bring more people to assist wow. growing our population. I like the way he thinks, man. It's very controversial. I'm out now. Uh, right no, here. No, no, I'm no, out now. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping on the sofa tonight. I'm sleeping on the sofa. In this case, I think I think we better move on. Okay, but, <laughs> but Mr. Tan, if, if you could have another wife, if let's say it's legal, would you have another wife? I mean, like. We're just saying, la, you know. I can, mean it will I, be true. I can give you the politically correct answer. Mm-hmm. I love my wife too much. Mm. Or I can give you my honest answer. Honest, honest, would be honest. Yeah. Oh, you want the honest yeah. answer? The answer that all men want to hear. Yes. Uh, okay. My honest answer is I have difficulty coping with one wife. One wife is already more than two. Which is the situation with all of us. No, for me, no wife. You face the same problem. Everybody gonna, everyone gonna, they laugh now, but tonight everyone is sleeping on the sofa. Luckily, I got no wife. And then you laugh. We should move on. In this room, I have my wife and my mom. There are too many. Yeah. Too much at stake right now. <laughs> Let's move on. Separately, yeah. <laughs> so maybe I can ask a bit more personal <coughs> question. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Tan, you blood. seem to be a very people person. You walk the ground, you talk to people, you listen to what they say about their aspirations, their concerns. I'm just wondering, there must be some reason for your interest in this people thing. Could your family background or family upbringing have something to do with it? With uh, that love to come out and talk to people, see uh, people? Yeah, uh, certainly that's the case. Mm. Uh, all my life I've been uh, among ordinary people. Mm. Where I live and, and, and so I don't belong to that special class which is called elite. Uh, if you don't belong to an elite, then you mix with the ordinary people. Okay, can I stop you there before yeah. we, we continue? We need to address your background. Yeah. Mm. Because you were the CEO mm. of NTUC Income mm. and you brought the company from $27 million, 
28 million dollars to 17 to 17 billion dollars billion yes so can you tell us more about that and how that happened uh, okay. because 17 billion is is yeah, not big, an easy feat big number man uh, okay now uh, I don't of course i'm sure you didn't do it alone but no? you were the ceo of the company at that time so how did you do it and why wouldn't you consider yourself among the elites if you have mm. achieved something like this uh well uh i joined the company when it was actually quite small uh quite small uh, and uh, if you look at the financial figures at that time it was i would describe as struggling a uh, struggling eh? uh, and then uh, when i left it was increased by 600 times okay uh, there's a, a few reasons behind it uh, one reason is the the, the country the economy grew the country become more prosperous and that's one reason but of course some of the companies during that time they don't they don't succeed they, they drop out eh? uh, but the other reason is uh, i run the company uh, frugally and uh, efficiently uh, i have a computer background uh, and uh, i was actually besides being the the ceo i was actually the computer system architect Uh, wow. Okay, I say, sir, for a company to be competitive, uh, in their lowering the cost of administration, their marketing, you need to have a good computer system, and that was also my my strength. So I will come and say that yes, the uh, the uh, there there are two or three factors. One of them is uh, the economic growth, but the other one is our choice of the strategy. Uh, to run the company efficiently and low cost, and we use that as a way to market to the uh, to the customer, future customer. Uh, we run at low cost so that we can give you bigger return, bigger bonuses. That become actually a very compelling formula. Wow, cool. So on this, on this, I guess on this so far, Tommy runs a food chain called MBCB. <laughs> to shop. It will eventually be a sh- food chain. Uh, Debbie runs a jewelry business as well, and of course, I run Titan Digital Media. So, my question to you as a CEO is: What are the factors for success? Uh, the same as I said, uh, run your business uh, uh, efficiently. Keep your cost low. Uh, keep your cost low. Uh, serve your customer well. But how you do you run efficiently uh, if a business is? scaling up uh, uh, oh so from let's say 30 t- people to 300 people how do you maintain efficiency oh it is uh, uh, the key you must maintain efficiency uh, uh, NTUC income when I joined I think they got 100 staff and then uh, the business grew when I left I think they would have uh, maybe I cannot remember maybe 2,000 full-time staff And maybe about ten thousand sales staff in there. So yes, it can grow very big. When you grow very big, uh, you don't need to be uh, bloated. You don't need to be bloated. You can still be lean uh, everywhere. I see. Meaning so, in manpower and uh, staff force. In force, manpower, is it? yes. Uh, and cost of no uh, running the business, of course. I will probably say uh, one more thing. Uh. Many companies waste a lot of. Money and uh, resources, doing things that are not necessary. They will say it's government regulation. It's not. It's the how you interpret the government regulation. If you interpret it uh, uh, in the kiasu way, you can end up spending a lot of unnecessary money. But if you interpret to say no, 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 I uh, we don't have to do it that way. It's not necessary. Uh, so I do. A lot of this. Uh, that means uh, I will look at the situation and I see what is really necessary. And in case of doubt, is this does, does the government require this or not? Uh, I will say no. Let them come and tell me. I must. So it's a lot of attention to details, even uh, in the small things. Definitely. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I must. I must also say, uh, is attention to uh, strategic details, not the minor details. So I would. Create the, the uh, framework. Uh, this is how you deal with this problem. Uh, the actual uh, uh, workers in the front line 
will implement. Uh, will implement that. So you create a framework to tell people this is what you can do and this is what you can't do, and you give them some leeway to to do that. Uh, and adopting that approach, uh, uh, really cut away a lot of waste. Wow, I love it. So how is running a company similar to running a country? To a large extent, it is the same. To a large extent, it's the same. You want to run it efficiently. You want to provide. In the case of a government, you provide public services to the people. In the case of a company, uh, you provide services to your customer who pay you the money. Now, in the case of a government, you provide services to the people. If you are inefficient, you're doing wasteful things, then the cost of your service is higher. Uh, it, it's, it's the same. It's the same. Uh, now, the other thing is, of course, a uh, 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 government should not always be run on a profit basis. There are many things that you're going to provide uh, uh, as a public good, and you don't even want to charge. Example would be schooling. You got school, no, and it's almost largely free. You know, it's it's, it's a state. It's a, it is a, uh, to be provided by the state, uh, and uh, you also want to run the school efficiently. Uh, you don't want to have more teachers than necessary. You don't want to have less teachers than necessary. So you need to find the optimum. Now, so now all this require judgment, and require judgment, and the judgment comes from people who has been on the ground, and they are entrusted to make judgment. Now, one problem in Singapore is we have these scholars who are military people come in, and they they are in charge, and they don't get the feel of the ground. So I hope uh, that. Uh, as the president, I got the power to say, I want to have a better balance. Uh, cannot be just depending upon uh, balance, you know, of, of people, scholars. You need to have balance of scholars plus the people with actual experience. So you think more businessmen should join the government? Uh, no, uh, not necessary. Uh, not necessary. Because it's uh, either military, army, or businessmen, right? Uh, okay. Or scholars, are, of course. Uh, no. Uh, there is a there is a category, is called the uh, public servant. Okay. The public servant, I would fall into that, that category. I will use my talent uh, to run the country well, not because I can earn the biggest the the biggest salary. I will earn an adequate salary, but I will put in my full energy to run the country well. That means I'm not a businessman. A businessman will say. I want to select uh, uh, a course of action that maximize my, my, my profit. So that's a businessman. The category which is called a public servant, uh, they are very intelligent people. Now we have this in our first generation civil servant. Uh, today, that concept is largely lost, uh, which is why I think we should uh, uh, reintroduce that concept. Uh, uh, you you are a public servant. You are quite well, reasonably well paid, but you're not paid as much as you could in the private sector. I see. Would you would you so would you say that you would be a president if you were paid peanuts? Would you be a uh, president? No, you don't. You don't need to be paid peanuts. Mm -hmm. uh, you can pay a president uh, half of the current salary. Mm -hmm. It's still very attractive. How much mm -hmm. is the current salary? Mm -hmm. The current salary for a president Six. and the and the minister. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's above a million dollars. Wow. When I was running NTUC income, mm -hmm. when it was $17 billion, I was earning less than a million. And... Well, it, you should have demanded for more. Sorry? Uh, no. Uh, my, my board of directors want to give me more. And I said, no. Because it's not just me alone. What about my managers? You must have some parity. Wow. If you want to get everybody up, that's fine. Mm. No, you, you cannot have a leader that's so far away from the others. So I do earn uh, maybe double of my, my, my next level, mm -hmm. but not 10 times. Not 10 times. Wow. Okay, so my question is that you were mentioning that you actually met your wife in a bridal shop. So why were you in the bridal shop and who were you with? <laughs> oh, wow. I happened to be walking by and there was this very attractive girl. 
Uh, and I was quite lonely at that time <laughs> because I was already uh, 26. Okay. And then already 26. So I should walk no, by a bridal yeah, shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know, uh, I was working since 18. So I got eight years trying to get a pretty girl <laughs> to be interested in me. Uh, okay, and it was quite tough you know, because if you go for the prettiest girl, they got already got boyfriend. Uh. Uh, mm. So yeah, uh, so uh, so I happened to see this pretty uh-huh. girl and uh, I make some uh, what do you call it? Uh, some moves. Uh, some moves. Okay. Some <laughs> some what moves? moves. <laughs> 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 what <laughs> moves? <laughs> could you could you show us the moves? Yeah, yeah, so some advice. Moves. Advice. Yeah, I'm still a virgin, uh, sir. So uh, I would like to know what kind of moves do you uh, do to get that lady? I would like oh, to I think something. it's quite quite simple. Just mm-hmm. just introduce yourself and talk, you know. Mm-hmm. And if she is interested, uh, mm-hmm. I must also say, uh, my wife is eight years younger than me, uh-huh. so maybe she was a bit more innocent. Innocent, <laughs> oh, <laughs> innocent girl, uh, oh, okay. I see. Okay. Uh, yeah. So 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 you see, uh, I I don't want to choose the uh, uh, the, the most. Uh, 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 the, the the best price, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. To me, I'm I'm a, I'm I'm quite uh, modest. Yeah. Uh, if uh, uh, if uh, if a girl is interested in me, we we'll just go and uh, have a date. But isn't your wife the best price? Uh, oh. For me, yes. For <laughs> me. Uh, Asking. And that's important. No, that's important. Yes. Uh, different people will have different choices. Mm. Uh, but True. if you if you choose one that is everybody is after, it's quite difficult. I huh? understand. Yeah. Okay. I understand. I, understand. I hope Understood. when you uh, when you succeed, you must invite me to be your. Of course. <laughs> of course, sir. You didn't, you didn't answer the question. Hey, yeah. Sorry. Answer your sentence. Solemnizer. Sorry? Were you gonna say solemnizer or invite you to be what? A guest. We no, 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 uh, okay, uh, one of my strengths is I don't, I'm not too particular about whatever I do. Mm. Uh, that means I, I, the Chinese term is called Ching Chai. Ah, uh, ching chai, the uh. English word is called YOLO. Anything okay. Yeah, right. Uh, ching Chai, actually. Anything okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so there, there are people who are very particular. Oh, you must this and you must that. It's too, too detailed. Uh, I, I'm not. I, I'm quite, 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 uh, quite free and easy, mm. uh, and I don't get offended by people. Uh, awesome. People have people have their own opinion. It's okay, mm. Uh, mm. but I I would get offended if people are rude mm. Mm. and people pass judgment that is not warranted. Mm. Mm. And, and and I don't pass judgment on people. Uh, so I was asked once uh, what I think about this situation. I said I don't know enough, so I should not make any judgment. I don't know enough about the facts. Mm. I should not make any judgment. Yeah. So I think the I think uh, I think that is I think uh, because I don't pass judgment on other people. Mm. Uh, that is actually quite quite a good uh, uh, habit, quite a good character trait. Mm. Uh, but most people will, will pass judgment uh, on on other people, and that create conflict. Mm. Uh, I I am free from that. Mm. I see. In oh, okay, but back, but back, back, back to the wife, Sorry? right? We uh, yeah, let's let's I go was back to ask yeah. about Mr. Stan further. In one of the recent videos or TikTok videos, uh, Mr. Stan was going to be asked about something or was asked to comment, mm. and then it seemed that you had cut her off. What were you uh, concerned about? Uh, okay, I think uh, that was actually a small matter. Yeah, yeah, it's it was small. small I, I was just uh, thinking okay, what, no, what uh, could be she the... She was asked uh, something which I would consider to be out of scope. Mm. Okay, okay, out of scope. And it would be difficult for her, it would be difficult mm. for her to answer because it's out of scope. Now, what is the, what is the scope? Huh? Uh, I told the, uh, the media, uh, my wife would be comfortable to talk about children, grandchildren, mm. food, uh, and and uh, things that are and clothing, <laughs> uh, clothing that, 
you know, uh, that's things that she's comfortable with. Uh. Mm. Then, then, then when she's, uh, uh, when she's asked about things which I think is not, uh, okay, outside of scope. Okay. Uh, so I says no, no, no. I, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Did you get criticism for that? Yeah. Uh, was that? No. Yeah. See, uh, so what was the criticism? That. Uh, that. You don't that. W- you? And, and were you? Were you? I would think that if I think my wife is out of debt at the situation, I would you, try to save her. You have yeah, to definitely, protect, no, you no, have no, to protect no. her, right? Uh, it's your no, job no, as a man. That, that's why I, I said, uh, some malicious or some exactly. uh, some people would make it into an issue, mm. but it's mm. not an issue. Mm. Uh, it's, yeah. it's a normal thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a normal, respectful thing to do. Yes. So you should uh, thank us for asking you the question, uh, yeah, yeah. so that you got an mm. opportunity to clarify. And, uh, and I, would, I, I think it's not nice for people to look at the issue and make it look worse than it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a normal issue, not a normal issue. Mm. I'm sure when there are difficult situations involving any family member, mm-hmm. it's our duty to, uh, to shield them from that. Yeah. Because yeah. my wife would prefer not to come with me. Mm. And since she come with me, uh, uh, it would be a bit Difficult for you her don't to, want to put her in. Why would she prefer though? not to come with you? Uh, okay. Uh, politics is quite rough. Politics is quite rough. Uh, she gets uh, nasty comments online. Okay. You know, nasty comments online. Uh, these are people that attack me uh, unfairly, unnecessarily. Mm. Uh, this is not good. Uh, this is not good. I I, I said that many times. Uh, so therefore, it, it's not good. So, so therefore, she prefers not to come. Mm. Uh, but then, uh, I. But you must be aware that it's a presidential election, and in this I day and age, will be beside you. social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so social media is ready to take small clips or even long clips, and just it go it goes viral. So, uh, sure. Uh, and in uh, fact, you've been through a presidential election before yeah. already, so this shouldn't be new to you, right? Uh, I still say it is unnecessary to smear people. Mm. Uh, uh, then you scare away everybody else. Uh. It's not a good habit. It's not a good habit. Uh, and I also tell uh, people, uh, don't anyhow pass judgment. Uh, that that's not that's not fair to other people. So there must be a there must be this thing called uh, you have to treat people fairly. You cannot just smear them and distort and then smear them. This is not good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so I continue to, to voice this out. Uh, if you continue this smearing and insulting, uh, uh, more and more people will run away uh, from uh, being involved in, in, in uh, public office. I won't even say politics, because I think politics is not good. Uh, just, just be involved in public office. That's my view. <laughs> I completely <laughs> understand. So overall, uh, my, my view is that it's not going to get any better. I think with uh, yeah, social uh, media and uh, the news, it's uh, it's just going to get worse. Right. So you uh, just have to learn to live with it uh, and no, learn no, how to use it no, to your advantage. No, I I, I disagree with you uh, because uh, I can live with it, uh, but the situation will become worse and worse. I, I understand, yeah. especially so, if so somebody is trying to smear your name. Uh, so it's actually important that everybody should do the part to uh, to reverse this. Uh, so I do appreciate that you are giving me a chance to uh, express that other view. Mm. Uh, I think we, we should. We cannot say that uh, there's nothing we can do. We should actually take a positive step uh, to say this is right and this is wrong. And the wrong things should not be condoned. It's difficult, but it should not be condoned. It's yet. difficult because right and wrong sort of falls in a grey area sometimes. Uh, no, uh, there, are, there are things that are quite clear. You do not smear people, you do not harm people. They are quite clear. Well, it's, the on, it's the online trolls uh, that you no, can no, never uh, stop. The online trolls should be stopped. How? What, what's it's your... It's kind of hard to stop. No. Mm. Uh, uh, You're going to ban everyone? No. Uh, there are ways and I will deal with it when I become the Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> 90 years old. <laughs> <laughs> very, very light-hearted move mm. about you and your missus. <laughs> Between two of you, mm. who laughs more? Uh, me. Uh, I, I, I laugh more because I take things easy. Uh, I take things easy. Uh, she's more serious. Mm. She's serious. Mm. <laughs> and she's worried about what other people think, and I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I'm just myself. Did she scold you for laughing? 
Because my wife does it. <laughs> she she scold me for uh, for things that uh, uh, doesn't fit her, uh, her paradigm of what is behavior, yeah, what, what yeah, is the proper right. behavior. Mm. I know. I mean, at the end of the day, many of us we just want a good laugh, right? Mm. I agree. Yeah, you guys so, so also, it's, so right? It's, it's actually not just laughing. Uh, it's the general attitude towards life. Uh. Right. Uh, yeah. I I I'm more lighthearted. And I would do things which uh, are fun to do, you know. But then she would probably say, "Hey, that's not so nice." Eh? So She's more serious minded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think most relationships are like this. Yeah. Where you have one person who's serious and one person who. No, Debbie is not. Debbie fun. can be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very fun. I'm, so I'm, I'm saying I'm the serious one. I'm saying I'm the serious one. You all think I'm fun. <laughs> What's your favorite thing you like to do with your wife? Uh, with my wife. Uh, in the past and today are quite different. I will skip that. It's too too private. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, something like that. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what about now? Now, like, what do you like to do with your wife now? Uh, okay, uh, my wife has an activity, mm. and I have my activity. Mm-hmm. So occasionally we'll go out, but only when the children arrange a dinner. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. But otherwise, uh. uh uh, she she enjoys playing uh, table tennis, mm-hmm. oh. uh, and I enjoy riding a bicycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't get her to ride a bicycle. I don't think it's a good idea for her to ride a bicycle. Mm-hmm. So I think we uh, we we have separate activities. Mm-hmm. Uh. Okay. She, table tennis is a good sport. Ah, yeah. She uh, enjoys I do that a lot as well. How do your kids feel about you running for president? Uh, initially, the discourage me very strongly was it because of the previous election in which uh, that's one you of lost? the reason uh, what's one of the reason uh, and uh, they were also a bit afraid about consequences on their jobs mm. and on their business mm. uh, which is very bad for people to fear to, to feel like that way yeah? mm. uh, and another reason is they don't think I will win uh. okay. but for me uh, my 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 uh, uh, my criteria is uh, uh, I want to offer to the people of Singapore the choice of an independent president, mm-hmm. and if they say that's not necessary, uh, that's that's fine. If they say that's very important, and as I go around the market, that is the prevailing thought. Mm. Say, Mr. Tan, we must have an independent president, and also uh, the. Uh, uh, they says, uh, Mr. Tan, do something about the high cost of living. Because is, is that the first thing you want to do when you become president? I uh, know it's. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, Multiple uh, things, including no, no. low. First thing rate. is party in the Istana. No, no, uh, no. Uh, as uh, Mr. Tan here, uh, Mr. Tan say, uh, the president has limited power. Yeah. The president don't have the ability to say do this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm counting on the president's soft power so soft power means uh, uh, I suggest this mm. the prime minister can say I don't care you know? uh, then of course the president will say if you want me to uh, release some money in the future it's not so easy you know mm-hmm. so you need to have that kind of uh, uh, soft power and uh, uh, miss my, my, my major opponent recognize that the president has soft power. So he says, yeah, the president has soft power, but the soft power uh, is effective only when the president and the prime minister are on good terms, close relationship. Mm. And of course I say, yes, I agree. I will have close, I will, I will, I will have good relationship with the prime minister. Mm. Uh, no doubt about that, otherwise you can't do anything. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it goes back to yeah. what you were saying about yeah. like in parliament where it's red shirts yeah. versus blue shirts, uh, right? So, so basically, uh, one thing I want to tell most people, huh, when something needs to be done, don't start by saying it can't be done. That means you've you you, you you got a negative perspective it can't be done. Mm. So I believe that if I'm the president, I can bring down the cost of living, I can make housing affordable, I can make sure people have secure and good paying jobs. I believe it can be done. There are obstacles. We'll, re- we'll, we'll solve the obstacles. 
so they are they'll be waste. Uh, so you never start by saying it can't be done. Mm. The president. You ask the how power. can it be done? Correct. Right. Before we leave, as somebody who has been through two presidential campaigns, how would you do it differently? Like, uh, what advice could you give someone who's going for you know presidential election? Just asking for a friend. Just ask. Relax. Uh, asking for a okay, friend. Okay. Uh, this time I'm going to write a book. Wow. Oh. Oh. It's a simple book. A simple book. These are the important lessons I learned from the presidential campaign. Uh, what are useful things to do, and what are things to avoid? Uh, so, mm. so I will write a book. Do's and don'ts. Uh, yeah. Mm. So uh, it's too many to sh- explain over here. What is the title going to be? Uh, I will take advice. I take advice. Eh? Uh, okay. His chat GPT. Uh. Mm. If so I become president. If I become president. How about that? Mm. Think, think of some titles. But if you become president. No, no, no you need to help him with his book. <coughs> well, the book. If I may. Or like, twice beaten, never shy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's a good one. Mm. I'm sure okay, I, I yeah. Ask you, yeah. One more <laughs> one more you, you think that the requirements to be the president as of now mm-hmm. is fair? Do you think. Oh, it's not fair? Uh, I think uh, there's no need to have such. Uh, requirement eh? mm. uh, and I hope that they will uh, rethink, uh, rethink uh, uh, maybe we should go back to the old days where parliament will select the president who uh, is not elected maybe you'll go back to old days. Well, you have a very interesting mindset in which you where, while we see a lot of candidates or even people in politics proposing new ideas, you think that we should go yeah. further backwards? Uh, basically, I see... Uh, so you have noticed that the modern times have made things a bit more difficult for I, the government? Uh, no, uh, basically I see uh, whatever we have, uh, what, the, what are the positive and the negative side? And the negative side of our system of electing a president overwhelms the positive side. Even the role uh, of custodian of the reserves uh, and the uh, upholding the public service, uh, I would recommend different approach. This current approach is uh, too costly and too too much difficulty. Uh, so, uh, well, that that was my my honest view. Now, the other thing I will want to say. Uh, I am quite different from most people. Uh, most people will look at an issue based upon their personal benefit. Uh, under this system, I can be the president. Mm. You know, that's their personal benefit. I always look at issue on the public good. The public good. How does it affect the majority? How does it affect the country? Uh, so uh, very few people think like me. Very few people think like me. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so I hope to uh, to promote the idea uh, that uh, uh, if you have more people thinking about the public good and not personal good, uh, that a country will be better. Mm. Mm. Well, well, I'm very profound. You are. You no, know, people call, call call me wise. I'm a wise man. Yes, definitely. I agree. Also, wiser than me. Yeah. Well, Maybe thank one you. Day we could all. Meet up and go for makan and massage. Okay. JV? No lah, Singapore. Okay, thank you so much for taking your time. Okay, boss. Thank you, Mr. Tan. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Uh, It's been a pleasure. All the best. We wish you all the best. Regardless of the result, I I appreciate your ideas and I hope that it will be considered and understood in the years to come. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.